Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Star Traders Frontiers. I'm your host, Colors Fade, and it's episode 8. And there is a powerful bounty hunter chasing us. I'm thinking about it, making upgrades to my ships. We have a little bit of excess gunnery here. If we upgraded our grav cannons, we could add some more. I don't know what else to really upgrade that would help us. Um, I wanted to save for a bigger ship. <laughs> But now we have this bounty on our head. So I think the smart thing to do is probably upgrade the ship. This is a legendary starport. Uh, we should probably upgrade it before. It's, it might be possible to run away from him, but it can't be guaranteed. She's an E-Tech. Oh, and I'm clicking the wrong button as always. This is what I do. I click wrong buttons. Go to visual on her. I need to get her in the right uniform here. Alright, she's got talents. Let's get the right talents for this person. And what I'm going to do with them is probably grab this listening post. Upon landing in an urban zone, 10% electronics chance plus electronics chance to learn of a new contact by snooping. I have a lot of these other ones. Uh, I only have two black market cards. I'd like to get some more of those. But we're not in a position where I need to use the black market yet. Uh, and as far as we have three people with hot wire this would be the other one to pick up um, and we have enough contacts for right now yeah I'm gonna grab hot wire I'm gonna grab hot wire because it's more important to handle saves right now and we're already getting some new contacts from this so it's so much fun to have lots of contacts and be able to to grab contracts as you're rolling through the systems uh, and she's well and in fact she still has she has two talents so I can grab both of them hey Awesome. Okay, back to here. Here's the other E-Tech. Again, there's a uniform for you, buddy. Put on the last uniform you'll ever wear. So he's the same uh, kind of thing. He's got... I'm going to give him a listening post as well. We've got seven cards for re-rolling when spying, so I'm not really worried about that. Um... What I'd also in this, yeah, and more hot wires would be good, but uh, we'll grab that later. All right, so the crew's done. So let's look at upgrading this. What we're gonna, oh, let's heal our one member here. So the grav guns, our gunnery is two twelve. Let's go upgrade. So if you upgrade from the cheap it. The most expensive of the cheap versions is 42.5k. It's what we got the level for. And then it jumps. <laughs> and it jumps from level 5 with 9 gunnery to this one. And, and my feeling is if you're going to make this substantial little jump from 42 to 68, 120,000. <laughs> then you might as just jump the, the next 80,000 and go this as far with it. But still, that would that would actually be a shock to our system. So this is good. They got the prices set up. They got the prices set up really good. This is smart. We're at 641k, and this would be dumb. This is a pr financially prudent decision here. Let's purchase that one. And that drops our gunnery down to 206. So if we do the same thing here and upgrade this one, we get we're gonna come out on the flat end of the 200 with it, aren't we? It's gonna come out right even. And there it is. We're at two hundred percent. So, for that, okay. Navigation, yeah. Um, <laughs> lots of navigation. The only way we could really make more use of our navigation is to grab a, a better sensor. And there's so there's this, and then there's also sig dampeners. Harder to spot you, yeah, and to escape combat. So this gives you plus five escape down here. That's our five hundred eighteen. Plus five escape and plus five void resist. Void is damage to your hull, basically, as the way I understand it. Or this accuracy. So this costs us 62k to upgrade this. Oh, that's a pretty cheap upgrade. It only adds one more navigation, but I'm going to do that. Every little bit helping there. Okay, and then what's this? This is... Oh yeah, rail track guidance matrix. Okay. I'm not sure. We 
we'd get much bang for our buck with that. Yeah, because that really jumps. That's expensive. That's another 60k for 8 accuracy and 14 to hit craft. And it adds... It's got the same amount of gunnery and pilots. Okay. I'm not going to spend 60k on that then. The next one up is nice with its initiative bonus. And then this... This gets you... This, I feel like... Eh, it's There's still going to be really small numbers, aren't they? Void resist... Mm. I'm not sure. What are we at right now? We're at array 2. So it's another 60k to jump up to here. Mm. Yeah, I'm not sure that's worth it. Not sure. Okay. The only other thing might be this. Some extra armor. What's this jump up to? 40 to 80. 16 radiation resist. This is radiation resist. I want the void one. Let's see. There's a void version of that, but it might only be in the medium slot. Is it a medium slot thing? Right there. Yes. Okay. So here's where we're going to spend our money. Yeah, I want this. Except I can't afford that gigantic one. Hmm. That's too bad. It's a medium slot. Oh, man. Too bad the hole wasn't big enough. Okay, so let's do some math here real quick. All right. I think I made a decision here. <laughs> this thing up here, six void resist. 19 shield. Now you can get the same 6 void resist out of this component down here. And you also get you so you're trading shielding for armor. It's got a reduction from 19 to 5. Still the same plus 3 jump cost and it adds 26 armor. It reduces two ship ops and two electronics. So it removes dice from those pools is the way I understand it. It would then allow me to put a, a different component down here in this slot if I wanted to or you could keep this but I don't really want the radiation resist that doesn't um, I'm not so worried about that. So what you can go down here if you search by defensive capabilities there is this thing the void pulse booster which also adds more void resist you can get a radiation version of it too if you wanted to. And it adds ship ops and electronics. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I don't know if it's ultimately going to help, but let's look at this. Let's let's keep track of these numbers here before we do this. So it's really interesting the way this game thinks about things like shields and armor because all the other games we've ever played in our lives teach us how to conceive of shields and armor. Shields is this invisible force field barrier that like an energy weapon can't penetrate, but maybe a kinetic weapon can. And then armor is something that, you know, has to be beaten down before you can get to the hull. Here, the game treats these concepts differently. Armor is kind of more or less the same, um, but if all your armor gets destroyed, it's kind of it's kind of like the hull, actually, and the ship goes kaboom. Shield shields the ship from component damage <laughs> so every single time a weapon attacks it, it can do component damage to the ship which is like it can destroy these quarters it can destroy this gun it can destroy your cargo hold and shielding helps reduce that damage before it then goes through there's a long pipeline of how damage gets controlled and how it gets applied and then mitigated and mitigated and mitigated and passed on and mitigated and passed on and mitigated so it's a it's a hell of a thing to sit there on the wiki and read it um, I'm I'm shooting, and then void and radiation are separate, and are applied separately. Void targeting the hull, basically. At any rate, I think I'm doing a somewhat poor job of describing what's going on here because even I don't quite have a grasp on this. It's a complicated system, but I think these changes here are going to help me more be defensive and I'm going to primarily be looking at these numbers to see if I can make them better with this uh, change. So before I do that, oh, 
Do you remember that trans arbiter we transported years ago? She's the talk of the Star Wars. Turns out she is a champion behind a unionist political movement. And now she has enough support to force a vote on amendments to faction accords in every single quadrant senate. They're trying to create a united coalition, excuse me, a global senate to rule over the entire galaxy. So, yeah. They say that she united coalition would be a body of elected officials from every quadrant. And that the factions would lend their strength to form a coalition defense forces. The shadow of the guild. Our people suffered for centuries under the tyrannical grip of the guild and the galactic government. What is this arbiter thinking? All right. Yeah, what is she thinking? Let's get back to work. I got my ship to fix. Enough chatter. I'm just like a real life captain. It's like the political stuff. Out of here. No, it's. Unfortunately, if it's true, the Quadrant Senate's really vote on the United Coalition to ratify it will affect us all. Many people are not going to be happy about the idea. They'll see it as a threat to our way of life, a betrayal of Shailun be a great area of political instability. The thing is, there's a... <laughs> During this era, we should expect civil unrest and heightened political espionage as the factions wrestle with the Unionist Amendments. We There's actually a, an unlock in the game, an achievement that has to do with a rallying three princes to the Arbiter's cause. I'm, I may actually like to try to do that on this playthrough. So we'll see. i got to pay my ship their wages, but what I really wanted to do was I'm going to make a quick save here. Save this before I mess with this, just in case I don't get this right. All right, let's let's try this upgrade path and see if I got enough money to do it. We're gonna go down here and grab this thing. And again, I've only got 255 to play with, so uh, I gotta go for the cheapest option here. Okay, and that adjusts that moves our armor up from 38 to. 50, from 9 to 15 and from 35 to 47. So that's nice. It drops our shields a little bit though. So now what we want to do is go change this over to uh, just do defensive. Get there faster. To this thing. Void resist armor and jump cost. I want to try that. I'm not sure if that's a smart idea or not. But plus 10 armor is what we're losing on that. Plus 10% armor. And some shielding. And this is going to give us void resist. Is that going to be better than the shielding? I don't know. Let's try it. So now our shield is all the way down to 24. It says it's 11 from 19. But there's no real way to add any more shielding that I could see. Um, I went through. I went through this list. And I couldn't find anything else that really added to shield so we're gonna hope this is enough because um, this put us let's put us back in a hole here gunnery's at 100 electronics and ship ops are a little short we could use one more e-tech if we can get our hands on them although i think our crew is full um and we're loaded with navigation of course because pilots and navigators so can this this punk who's going to come after us will probably still squash us uh let's go to orbit I want to patrol a little bit first to try to raise our rep above 20. Bounty. Death among crew. Lifesaver talent will prevent death. Okay, then let me save my cards for really bad things. Learn of a new rumor. Meteor storm over Durega. Powerful, unexpected ship. Wow. You guys are not... This is not liking me today. Damage to the crew. Oh! Oh, here we go. Okay. Oh! Killing me, Smalls. And we got actual damage, too, which kind of sucked. Um, there's two on here. Oh, thank you. Okay. Powerful ship. I don't need to be fighting a powerful ship because I got some damage to components. Explorer ship. What else? It's a little bit of smuggler love over here. Nope. Made saving throws, though. Smuggler love. Smuggler love. 
powerful ship. All right, got a lifesaver. See, that's what I was talking about before earlier. That lifesaver talent allows you to get that that bad one off of there. New contact introduction. Of course, we can't have that. We can't have nice things. At least we made a saving throw there. <gasps> Rep. Okay. Rep. Do it. <gasps> you sucker. Unexpected ship. Hey, there's some reps. And a pirate. Steel song. There are people. We're at 22. That's nice. I'm just going to see if I can cheese out one or two more here. Probably just burn my car. Oh, there we go. We made saving throw. That's nice. Reroll. Erase. Oh, there we go. That's what I like to see. 11 rep. Okay. Puts us at 33. You still got a couple of cards here. Crew danger. Big risk. No whammies. Stop. There's the. Oh, there was the clans in right there. But nope. Fight. Oh no, it's a Kadar. Okay. So, I just had a little bit of a thread on Steam about this because I lost my, I lost my captain in my first try at hard, and I lost it because I looked at this screen before I started a fight and it and it made it sound like I was gonna crush the enemy like this guy's level 6 and we're level 14 but look he's got 18 void resist plus 2 initiative plus 9 accuracy plus 5 standard damage plus 2 critical plus 88 resistance his hull size is 1200 I mean I would look at this and think yeah I, th I think we got this guy but on hard it didn't seem to matter it was like the game just was going to crush me no matter what. I'd like to see that be more accurate. Somebody was mentioning, well, you don't want to give the dice rolls away, but you don't need to. You know, just provide some kind of small, accurate assessment. Like like on the cards where it says minus 5, plus 5, plus 3, minus 1. Give me some kind of accurate assessment as to how our ship ranks compared to that one. I mean, don't we have a Mr. Spock on our on our ship you know captain sensors say they have four torpedoes instead of two we should run i mean don't we have isn't it science fiction can't we just make an excuse to come up with something that works so we can make informed decisions about should i fight this person or run i mean i don't know <laughs> i think we should be able to it makes sense to me. It's the way video, video games have been doing it for thousands of years. Right? I mean, not thousands of years. You know I'm joking, but... It's kind of like fighting somebody, you know? It's like you see a guy over there and he's... You know he's got a black belt in Taekwondo and you're like, eh, I'm not messing with him. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Okay, so... We have ship damage there. It stinks, uh, but we're one step closer. So I'm going to purge, fight, move. If that sounds like a, a dirty dancing sequence, it kind of is. This is a little bit like a dance. He tried to leave, and we said no. And now we're going to clip his wings. So he's got some damage resist there because normally we're spitting some pretty higher numbers than that. So his uh, 18 void resist, I think, is is making a difference there. It's not allowing us to, to hammer him with really big numbers. Like in the 200s, you know, which is kind of what you'd expect. The math nerd in me wants to sit down and actually figure out all these numbers at some point in time. I'm sure that would help. Let's 
Let's finish him off. Oh, there he goes. They're all ruptured. Well, so be it. We'll salvage that, Kadars. Alright, there's no, no there's only one rep card there and we're probably not gonna get it. So let's go to orbit land. We have helped fix our reputation with those guys, which is great. And now we've got a person who's gonna level a pilot. Alright. Oh yeah, we got we got plenty of twitch surges, but that's done it three. I'm gonna grab another one of those. I need to have those. Okay. Overdue. Running guns. We're not gonna worry about it. Again, this is this was part of the story to do with Valencia, and it, there's no point now. In fact, now I've gone through. I think I've started six or seven different captains now, and got this far in the story. And not one time have I, have I been able to complete any of these missions for Badu Jack before Valencia's um, sentence comes down. And before she... I mean, uh, you do this after her sentence comes down, but before she runs off. She leaves my boat before this ever gets done. So, uh, I know what they're doing with this game and the years and the time frame and everything, and it's all very carefully balanced, you know, the durations and stuff like that. Um, games that have time limits on them aren't things that I typically like. It, I think it's a testament to this game how good it is that I can deal with all these quests with time limits and not lose my mind because I typically really don't like that kind of stuff. But even though that's all true, and I do think they've balanced it really, really well, you can tell it's a fine-tuned machine from years of development. It still feels like some of these missions don't have enough time uh, for you to do them. So, you know, you're trying to make money because you have to make money or you're going to get blown out of the sky. But then you also have these story missions to do. And what I've really found is there's a there's a tug of war going on between those two things. Do I want to do story missions? Do I want to make money so I don't get my ass kicked? Well, I'm going to ignore the story then and, and not get my ass kicked because it's just too important I can't even imagine on hard mode I haven't made it this far because I keep getting blown out of the sky um, and that's just trying to ignore the story on hard mode <laughs> it's, it's like I don't know how some people are doing it alright so Wilds he's 10 AU away but remember we have a prisoner we should have a prisoner you can always check here to see who it is and you can go to your cargo to see exactly who it is. It's carried for Steel Song against Clan Zenrin. It's Merchant Raynor. So Merchant Raynor, which one is that? It's gotta be this one, right? Yeah, because it's right here, the icon says the chains minus the so this is the only step that's left. So we have to go over here and drop this person off. Where does it say Merchant Raynor's name, though? Merchant Raynor, right there. At the, at the start, if I could read, I'd be fine. Okay. This font is a little hard on my eyes. So is Stellaris' font, man. Uh, I, get, I get people making the font choices they do for stylistic reasons and stuff, but for those of us who don't have great eyes, some of these things are really hard. All right. There's Retreat. There's our boy. We'll come get him next. Let's see if we can make some rolls without Xenos. Oh, the fifth divide. Oh, so who's here? Now, how much time do we have to take back this person? One year. One, oh, this is eight years? No, that's a bolt hole. We have two years on this one in 40 weeks. Okay, let's do some patrolling here. Let's see if we can get some rep. Minus 12, you gotta do some patrolling. Get these people up. Bribe. Recover fuel and repair ship. That's always a nice little card. And. Gained experience. Oh my goodness, that's just a lot of red. 
<laughs> Game is like, I don't like you. <laughs> oh, it's a pirate. Oh, we have the same ship. I. Oh, and it's the Kadar. I just feel like I'm digging myself a hole with them, and I'd like to be able to get out about by patrolling their systems, so. I'd like. To, oh, gosh, really? You're gonna make me fight? Plus 10 escape. Twitch surge, he says, I'm coming for you. Oh my god, we're still not. Okay. We can't get away. Hmm. Our escape capabilities outclass the enemy ship. No, they don't. <laughs> we'll try one more time because he hasn't hit us yet. And I've got two buffs on to help with escape. Oh, and he finally hit me. There we go. We're out of there. Oh, no, but he closed range. <laughs> oh, jeez. Can we actually get out of here? we got one more chance. I should have used defense to keep... I should have put evasive maneuvers on there to keep him from hitting me in case he did. We got away. Okay. All right. Well, that was... That was fun. Uh, oh, I hate it when I see the rep card and it's the first one that disappears. Oh, no. Internal components. Okay. Captain quietly bribing officials and customers at the spice hall everywhere we go and they finally turned up something drave solar guard has been through here he's sure to be laying a trap in a nearby system yeah great we're gonna have to face him soon aren't we wonderful okay keep patrolling hmm We lost five morale because a distress ship broke up and we couldn't be there to save them. Powerful and unexpected ship. Oh, killing me, Smalls. Components. Powerful and unexpected ship. Get a rumor out of that. Haven't you heard the rumor? Oh. Snatching it right out from underneath me. It's a bad day for cards. <laughs> Another rumor. <laughs> rumor has it. Reroll a risk card. Hmm, okay. I don't want to face a ship, so if I just get to simulate. <laughs> Already having the damage there. <laughs> Pirate. Pirates like money. Lighting up his arc sensors. Greetings from the void, Captain. Oh, two chances to surrender. Okay. Capture warrant. Oh, yeah, yeah. He wants to put me in prison. There will be no surrender. Let's, so I, I'm doing this mostly because I want to take some notes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> enemies' boarding capabilities outclass ours. Their engine speed outclass us in both cases. And their enemies' escape capabilities outclass us. But our attack accuracy outclasses theirs. Now, see, people are telling me this isn't accurate. So <coughs> Our ship has 2,000 to 2,000 hull points. His has 1,900. It's a sword cutter. The enemy captain is level 13 bounty hunter with 108 points, and the enemy ship has 13 cargo and 38 crew. Okay. Well. Alright. So be it. Him missing is a good sign. Alright, in that case... Keep my defense up and hit him while we move. And there goes some weapons of his that, that hit and hit hard, so. 
we're almost there. Let's apply. What is this? Standard damage for him. Yes, I would like to, him to do less standard damage, please. Okay, what's this thing going on? Tireless Pursuit applied. What's that do? Minus 10 armor, minus 40 escape. I don't care about the armor. What's the other thing? Venting hole. That I do mind. Yeah, broadside angle me, buddy. Oh, I crit him. I crit him, and now he's thinking twice. Okay. That helps. Uh, what else do we have on him? Devastating shot. He's got one, minus one reactor point. We need to do this. Minus rain change. You're not getting away from me now, buddy. I'm on the winning end of this thing. He's doing good solid damage with his, his rail guns. Now we need bonus. Bonus broadside him. We need to end him. Before he knocks out one of my weapons. Yeah, which he just did. Fix it, Felix. Fix it. I can still fire. I can't fire my rail again because it's three action points. Reactor points. Oh, but he's down. Oh my gosh. Okay. Whoa, we beat the Dread Pirate Roberts. Wow. I've been looking for you for a long time, Captain. Someone to help me end this endless cycle of death. You've been seeking the peace of the void, Drave. You've been out here a long time. Now let the void embrace you. Hunter Sol Ragard is dead and the Black Battleth is defeated. The warrant is invalidated. We have gained a massive experience reward. Wow. Okay. See, normal mode is fun. <laughs> I like normal mode. Oh my gosh. That was cool. Oh my gosh. That was really cool. I, of course, it, it cost us pretty heftily. <laughs> jeez. Oh my gosh, so much money. Oh, jeez. Okay, everybody. Wow, alright. I gotta make a note of that. Jeez. So, I took a screenshot of this, so I have some idea on later playthroughs on other difficulties of this ship killed Draith Solar Guard, at least on normal. I like that. I like to have baselines to work with. So lots of experience here, and that causes her to level up, which is fantastic. Uh, quartermaster shock trooper. Oh, honey, you are a shock trooper. There's a much better uniform for you. Okay, shock trooper eight, soldier one. Let's start moving her soldier up. Okay, so where we were headed before we were so rudely interrupted. Oh, wait a minute. So we're not done patrolling. I want to finish patrolling. I have a bunch of patrolling to do here, actually. You can see. we got to have enough time to get our person back. Oh, wow. There's four, three rep cards. Boy, I thought it was going to hurt me with all of them there. Fight. Okay. I'm just going to leave you in peace. Little dude. Bye-bye. Yay. Now we're at plus nine. That's great. Okay. I'd like to get one more little bit here. Getting to 20 would be good.
if we could somehow, maybe. I don't think so. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Oh, I might have to leave to plus nine. Oh, come on. What are you? Off we go. No option to bribe this guy. So you gotta just vacate. Alright, I don't have to see anymore. Let's do this. These get before we go. I wanna I wanna see how far oh they're 190 Oh these are Kadar. That's right. I thought there was somebody these guys. How far? Twenty nine. Oh man. Death among the crew. No life saving talent. Yikes. Learn a new rumor. We're learning a lot of rumors. Strike a blow in a conflict. Oh. I pressed the wrong button there. Remove a risk card or. Yeah. New contact. Okay. See, <laughs> there's plenty of ways to get new contacts in this game, so starting out with not a lot of contacts is not necessarily super important. I think it's probably only really important on the harder modes because. You need to have the right contacts to at least reduce things like fuel and and uh, ship repair costs. Jeez. Okay, buddy. Because that was the first time. I've only tried hard mode twice. And the first time I didn't even make it five minutes because I ran out of money. Uh, I just, you know, was playing like I have been playing. And it was like, oh, holy cow, you got to be really careful with your money right out of the gate so having all of those little bonuses to reductions for the cost of things was really important look at that we had three cards that could have gave us rep and, and instead we get this um, <laughs> three rep cards here oh my gosh at least we got some fight that's our ship Yeah, so the, the first time I tried hard mode, that was just the, the cost of things. Paying for, paying for your crew, wounded because you couldn't make saving throws crossing the galaxy in the early game. So they needed medical attention and then repairing your ship because you couldn't make saving throws. Um, it was it was brutal. And so I, I quickly saw the value of having contacts that would do things like reduce the cost of fuel and reduce the cost of repairs and reduce the cost of medical equipment. Those all became uh, things I was looking for. <laughs> oh, here we go. That'd be nice. Yay. It gets us to plus four, so they'll at least let us do stuff here. Okay, that's nice. Fight, but I don't want to fight. I like the idea of having to struggle. I did like all that micromanagement when I was trying to hard mode. I liked all of that. That was cool. I like the idea of permanent death. I like the idea of being um, somewhat, you know, on your toes and frightened about results. What I didn't like was that it was so easy to get destroyed in ship and and crew combat. It was like, well, and that none of the readouts seemed to give you any idea of how easily you were going to get crushed like this here look this is this is the next level up ship from where i'm at actually yeah it is it's the next hull up isn't it or is it even or is it even two hulls up it's the dragon cruiser i mean the thing is awesome and this this preview is telling me that i should have no problem crushing this thing but i'm not sure i believe that <laughs> so I'm going to leave. 
if I can. Yeah, see, and he drills me right off the bat there. Yeah, bye. That's actually the next ship that I go into, is the Dragon Cruiser. I like that one a lot. Okay, so we're at plus, we're at plus 30 from that. Awesome. Now all of their stuff is accessible to us, which is fantastic. Heal two crew members, pay them, spice hall, make everybody happy. Cool. All right, let's go take our person now who's sitting here at one year, 48 weeks. Let's go hand them off for some cash, shall we? Cadrino Chaos. Pirate I can just acknowledge him because now we're friends with him. I like I like the way the reputation system works in this game. I like the fact that you can manipulate it a little bit. I like the fact that there's at least a mechanism to deal with it. And it, it can be risky, and you need to have the right saves so you can deflect those cards, but to me, that's always one of the most important things in designing games well, is give the player tools to deal with things. Those tools may have some random component in them, so the random number random number generator may rob the player from time to time. Certainly that, X, that happens with XCOM, but like in XCOM, you don't lack for tools to deal with situations as the game gets harder. The game gets harder and you get more enemies and they have more things that they can do. But so do you. You have tools for the job. And I like that. And so I like that there is, you know, there's the spying and there's the patrolling and there's the blockading and there's the exploring here. And there's and there's all your various saving throws and talents that you can use to try to help with this. And that makes it cool. Public procession. We're bounty hunters. We're going to get paid 225 for that. That's very nice. I like bounties. They pay. That's the way it was in Privateer too. Way back when. Bounty hunting missions always paid the most. But. Um, well I'll talk about that in a minute. Oh. Many welcomes Captain. You seem especially eager to meet with me today. I am in need of help. Of an off-worlder like yourself. Well, my problem is actually here in this very faction holding. Certainly you've heard the word of the second founding. The Senate of our quadrant is even now taking up a vote on the amendments to the faction accords. It is causing a great deal of unrest and anger among our citizens. They fear that we are repeating the mistakes of the past, as if we are bending on the knee to the guild all over again. Can't your own forces keep the situation stable? This specific problem is so touchy, there is a local demagogue who is madly popular with the masses. Doing anything to silence them would cause massive backlash. My own commanders are warning me not to kick the magma bomb. I see. So it'd be easier if off-worlders took care of it. Exactly. Okay. Alright. How exactly do you want us to silence the demigod? The man's name is Jarek Moon. I hate to say it, but he's a master of rabble-rousing. But he is as arrogant as he is as skillful. We have all the intel on him. Striking him down is only a matter of making the decision and sending it, sending in the hit. He has a lax security detail, and my forces would let you out of the controlled district so you could strike his headquarters directly. A new mission has been added, including a handsome payment. If we do not help, this Jarek Moon is likely to agitate a civil unrest rumor. Ooh. Okay. So here's the mission. Local mission, headquarters strike. No hyperwave drops. All we need to do is go in there with ground combat. It looks like. Okay. Oh. Take that mission. Rabble rouser. Right here. And then what about the high princess? What's she got for us? She's got poddens, which we don't need. Discounted new ships, which is really nice. We can save up to 10% on a new ship, which is fantastic. Death warrant gives you the right capture and I want I'm not going to spend any more that I'm a full hunter right now you can see what the levels do carrying level 2 or higher any bounty hunter snappers or assassins recruited from the contacts gain plus 1 level at edict 5 or higher these recruits gain a plus 2 bonus levels carrying an edict 3 or higher we can submit to inspection during ship encounter and the enemy captain will call office inspection once our edict is shown so I like having that Alright. 
Michonnes. What do you got for me? Oh, people to go capture. This is two jumps from Dark Cluster. The outlaw, Takala, has disappeared somewhere. And I've got six years and 23 weeks to get this. Yeah, by spying. Oh, by spying and not exploration. I'm accepting that. Hello. Okay, so rabble rather. So what I was saying about privateer was, before I do this, I'm going to check my crew and I'm going to talk about this while I'm doing it. Um, privateer, there were only four ships in the whole game. So you started, there were actually technically three. You started off with the Junker at, that your uncle had gifted you when he died. That was your inheritance. It was this complete Junker ship. <laughs> And then there were actually three ships in the game that you could buy. And one of them was this slow, tanky turtle with a small cargo hold. Um, but it was like the medium-sized cargo hold out of the three ships. The, the better ship was this gigantic, huge hauler that had tons of cargo room and a rear cannon on it and stuff like that. And that was kind of like the ship you wanted to get into as soon as you could. Because you could, then you could make money as a trader figuring out the trade routes where to buy low and sell high but once you got enough money you could get the final ship which was a fighter craft that could load way more weapons than any of those other ships it had a super smart small cargo hole you were not hauling cargo with it but it was an assassin's machine and that's when you could start bounty hunting and the bounties always paid the most money they were awesome i loved that about privateer it was so cool it was such a fun game oh my gosh it was so fun and they and they got a lot of that right with Rebel Galaxy Outlaw, except that the end game scaling on it was pretty awful. I need to go back and see if they fixed that. Actually, she is the swordsman. Visual. I don't like her uniform though. For that, can I give her something else? like one uniform in here and I already passed it this that reminds me of a pistolier's outfit it looks really cool it's a great outfit pilot she's not really a tank she's got a sword so when I think a swordsman really I really think is like this one so that's usually what I put them in okay so let's see rap oh we wanted to look at gear so let's go to fighters there's a there's a combat medic Let's look at equipment. Yeah, so they got like, I mean, the locker just upgrades, and we don't we don't have anything else. We haven't bought anything else. Okay, so she's wearing this. It's got plus five dodge. This is stealth dodge, which requires the stealth skill. Yeah, so everybody's kind of wearing what they should, except for this guy. Now, here's the thing: you can put this heavier armor on him, which soaks a lot more damage. You can see the problem being that it penalizes you for initiative and the problem I have here is I've seen two different kinds of advice on the internet about this and one kind of advice says stick with the regular armor that doesn't have the initiative penalty because the initiative penalty is, is too hurtful and it's this bumps up to like plus four and maybe even more than that later on and then I've heard people who say, no, 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 put the heavy body armor on because you can't, uh, because it's more important to have the initiative and not this penalty. I don't, I don't know what the correct answer here is. I know that initiative is really important. Being able to act more often is really important, but also getting the crap kicked out of you by stuff is, is no good either. So... This is a lot of damage and he's in the back row and the only thing that can happen is he can get shot at. Um, well, except for aliens have long range reach melee attacks that I think can get to him. Um, I'm going to put this on him just to see. And then for the weapon, yeah, he's got this. You can give him a sniper rifle, but then it has a way bigger um, initiative use. <sighs> Yeah, 18 initiative use it. I'm going to keep this on him. You can get a machine gun later, I think. Um, that's kind of falls as far as initiative use somewhere between this gun and the sniper. Um, it's what I was using in one of my, my other playthroughs. And then with her, same thing. I'm going to give her this. 
Oh, no, no. Yeah, I'm going to give her this. She's up front. So I kind of... I kind of don't want her getting smacked around. The same thing with him. He's a shotgunner, but we're not really using him. Although he's really good. Um, Capitan doesn't need it. Because this is the other thing to look at. Actually, you can just go back up here. His stats... Plus 15 to all damage. I, I'm so tempted to promote him to officer, but it's a little too late now. He'd have a hard time catching up. 3 fortitude plus 3 initiative. With a 22 quickness and a 24 wisdom, so a total score of 46. Versus my current shock trooper, who has a smaller score. Minus 5 charisma. Minus 2 charisma, plus 15 all damage, and doesn't have the extra initiative. <clears throat> Man. Man, it would almost be worth it to move the other guy up, wouldn't it? Because of that plus three initiative and he's just got better stats. Huh, how far be he's so far behind though. I wonder I wonder if you can get them caught up on experience. Or if he's just always gonna lag behind. Huh. That's a really hard decision. He's level fourteen and she's level fifteen, but it's not quite the same thing. And I made him what? He's just a soldier for right now. Oh, wait a minute. Ha <laughs> ha! It's retroactive. So if you promote him, he gets all the skills and talents and points. Oh, hell yes. <laughs> okay, Treese Brothers. Good decision. I really like that decision. I'm all in on that. I think that's really smart. So his initiative range, 12 to 23 versus... Hers, 10 to 19, minus 2. Oh my gosh. Okay, yeah, yeah. We're done with her. Bye. Cannot be undone. Yeah, uh-huh, because guess what? <laughs> We're going to promote him. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my gosh, yes. Train your jobs, please. Okay. And the cool thing is now, <clears throat> he... Uh, he just can be straight up, straight up trained into three different things. So I want Shock Trooper. That's, I want Shock Trooper. Shock Trooper and Soldier. Okay, hold on. I got to do some extra thinking about this. The one disadvantage is that was my quartermaster. And the one useful skill she had was uh, to, to prevent the crew from leaving when they landed somewhere. You can get Zealots. Zealots to, t to take the place of doing that. So I'm going to go for, let's see, I have 12 points to spend. Shock Trooper 5, Soldier 5, and then what else would synergize really well? The Exo Scout actually has some really nice skills that can be used in the second position where this person sits all day. So uh, we're going to do that give him that how many he's got three more points to spend there i'm going to run up shock trooper to eight and then do the talents here here's what i've done he's gonna get all right some of the classic stuff here steady mobility because it's a shot and a buff just for the initiative of the weapon really nice retaliation one and a half times the cost but we know where our retaliation is awesome and that also gives you plus two initiative. Pick up uh, Frag Shell, also from Shock Trooper line. In crew combat, Crippling Rifle Attack causes minus three initiative to who you're hitting. So that helps finish off people uh, in a turn who only have a couple points left. Um, which is really good. It can be used from the first two positions. And then here's the thing about the Shock Trooper being in second position. he's He tends to get moved around a lot because of the hits that other characters do to him. So here... In the Exoscout, you can give him aggressive advance. It's a rifle attack. It advances in one slot. Only costs the initiative of the weapon to use. So, a a again, it buffs yourself. Plus two initiative. Range accuracy, armor piercing, and resisted debuff. And it moves you forward a slot. And then same thing if you get m moved forward too far. You have this one. Crippling rifle attack. Successful hit pins the target and causes plus 25 stun for three turns and retreats a slot. So you can move yourself back around a little bit. And then this final one, 
Roaring Barrels, uh, Rifle Attack, plus 25 range damage, plus 20 armor piercing, and removes all buffs from the target. So I, I like that. That's all well-rounded for him. Uh, pretty jacked about that. It's going to be really cool. In fact, let's... Let's save, because this is going to be the end of this episode here after we do this. Ravel Rouser. Even if Jarek Moon isn't suspecting an attack from a Star Trader captain, he will have some protection around him. We should expect to face two back-to-back -back crew combats in order to corner Moon. Okay, let's try it. Let's see if we can get our butts kicked or not. You, my brand new officer, <clears throat> I love that that's retroactive. That's such a great choice of them to do that. Let's go do this. Let's see if we can do this. We've got 23s and 23s. That's nice. And then he must have rolled the lowest number he possibly could. We promoted you so you wouldn't roll low numbers. <laughs> All right. This buffs you, which is nice. Let's shoot the person in slot two. Oh, missing hurts. And she doesn't have her moral morality poison yet, which really stinks. Um, oh, but she hit them. Okay. Hey. Oh, yep. Yeah. You got a chance now. Do you want to heal our buddy? I suppose that's a smart thing to do. Retaliation is coming at you. All right, you got a second chance to buff yourself. There you go, buddy. Good shot. Did a lot of damage on that one. All right, retaliation. Let's see. This person's damaged, so. <clears throat> she is in this position where we can do that. It's very nice. You could just shoot. Oh, that's nice. Oh, you're dead. Oh, she, it's out, it's off. It went off. That's too bad. Okay, he could just take a regular shot, but he can also do this one. This is for the weapons initiative. Yep. So I'm going to shoot here because it's going to buff him. She might be able to kill one of these two clowns. Nope. Okay. Not quite. Oh, she's going to get a second chance. Okay. He's got bio agent flesh at. Oh man, I'm not even going to get a chance to pull off my assassin's really cool move here. Nope. No chance. Oh. oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have to fight back to back. So, she's got five initiative. We do this. We gotta get healed. We gotta get healed. Alright, because you're the one who has to do this. Heal her. We are counting on you, my friend, to finish her off. Good job. <clears throat> now we can go on to the second fight. Cut through their door, guard. Forward to Moon's office. Curse the pit. There are a hundred fighters among them. It doesn't matter. Cut the crazed revolutionaries down. We're going after him. He's right there. He's got a little officer symbol there. She is. Okay. Second position. Nail. You buff thyself. Excellent. Oh, that's how you want to play it. Okay. Now you got a job here. Do this. Give her morale too. Don't even chance it. You get your second buff by shooting that and hitting. She's down to 12 initiative and the smoke bomb causes 12 to use. Oh, he resisted her. He'd have no action points. Oh, man. Okay. Oh, really? That's the way you want to play it. Okay. This is crew combat 
Hits two targets, removes all buffs. Okay, oh wow. She rolled really low. Uh, fix her. <laughs> now he's got that move that can move him forward. Retreats one slot, and this one right here advances one slot. Yeah, baby. Put me back in front of the doctor. <clears throat> oh, and she's not in stealth mode anymore. That's too bad. Okay. Oh, you're dead. Oh my goodness. Okay, this one, and retreats one slot. Let's see, you're fully buffed. Hits two targets, removes all buffs. Yes, try to do that. <coughs> Alright, sister. Heal. Big heals. <laughs> no whammies. Stop. Down to the last one. Used to... Okay. And then what is this? Removes all buffs from the target. Oh, and it just flat out killed him. Unhand me, you murderous louts. Captain, we've got Jarek Moon right here. The wrath of Shaloon will strike you down. The wrath of the righteous citizens will strike you down. The wrath. There, there, Moon. Keep your mouth shut. What should you do with him, Captain? Take him into custody. We're not going to have his blood on our hands. Giving birth to the new guild. Remember this day when you feel the lash of your new masters. That's enough, Moon. All right. Depart. Victorious, 27k. All right. What about Jevin? As requested. Not exactly what we had agreed, but close enough. Public wrath is directed towards you. I tread carefully around here for a time. I think the local forces will be able to keep the situation in hand and prevent a full on rioting. We have gained major experience reward for turning them in alive. 240. Our contact has gained five influence, and we have increased our personal reputation. Cha-ching! Well, that was nice. Excellent! <laughs> My fighters performed in combat. That was pretty cool. Okay, folks. That's it for that episode. All kinds of fun. Uh, I, I dig it. I'm having fun with the game. I'm having fun with that on normal mode, anyways. <laughs> Hard mode is, is probably something I'm not going to play anymore. Uh, <laughs> Thank goodness you haven't got to see that, because that was a disaster. But this is cool. I dig this. So I, I can't wait to play on a more custom mode. I love that you can customize the modes. It's really cool. You can customize your difficulty mode. I want to try permadeath, but I want to try it with no bonuses for anybody. Just flat, even. You know, no bonuses for the enemies, no bonuses for me. Just go and, and try it that way with the permadeath and try not to get killed. So I think it's cool. I think it's a good game. I think they've made a really cool game. I'm really happy with it. And if people are asking, I think, yeah, you should. If you're into this kind of game, you should play it for sure. Uh, so I dig it. Drop your questions, comments down below. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. Patreon is listed in the link in the description below. I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching.